This is my home theater. Well, it's not actually my home theater yet. Hopefully one day though, it will be my home theater. Right now it's more of a catch-all. It houses my uglies and my favorite budget 4K television, the TCL Roku. But this will someday be my theater room. I just need a little bit of kick in the pants to be able to get it there. Speaking of kick in the pants, sometimes you just want that kick in the pants when you're in your home theater as well. I felt that! Oh my this is the BSA 200, and that's exactly what it's designed for. Okay, so you don't want a literal kick in the pants in your theater room. That would just be a little weird. What you do want is a little tactile feel when your bass hits. This is where the BSA 200 comes in handy. The BSA 200 is simply a class AB subwoofer amplifier. However, the engineers at Dayton have specifically designed this to be used with bass shakers. They did this by adding a few really unique features, such as a remote control to control the volume and a USB port on the back, which allows you to wirelessly transmit your subwoofer signal from one side of the room to the other. That means no more running that long subwoofer cable. However, to utilize that feature, you will have to buy an optional unit. Now you are probably assuming that the BSA 200 is a 200 watt amplifier you would be wrong. It's actually either a 210 watt amplifier or a 230 watt amplifier. That just depends on how you hook it up. And like most subwoofer amplifiers, it does feature your normal variable subwoofer crossover frequency of 50 to 200 Hertz and a volume adjustment. It also has a switch on the rear to set your voltage based on where you live. These are typical things you would find on a subwoofer amplifier. However, there is one adjustment that you don't typically find on a subwoofer amplifier, and that's a balance knob. This allows you to have more or less bass to one side. More on that just a little bit later. But before we go too far, let's first explain what a bass shaker is. This is a bass shaker. This unit attaches to your furniture, so when your bass hits, it actually shakes the furniture and not necessarily the entire house. This adds that tactile feel you get from bass, but not the sound. This can be very useful when you want that tactile feel, but you don't want the volume all the way up. Think about when your kids are sleeping, or if you live in an apartment or a condo. And although that's really handy, that's not the only reason why someone buys bass shakers. It just adds a whole new dynamic to movies that you typically don't get. <laughs> for some people, this is an experience that they're willing to pay more for. In fact, higher end movie theaters, you have to pay extra to be able to sit in seats with bass shakers attached to them. But now, you don't have to. The Dayton BSA 200 can hook up four different bass shakers to just this one amplifier. This means that you can hook up four completely different chairs or do as I'm doing and hook them all up to one couch. There are two common ways to hook these up, stereo mode or mono mode. The first and easiest way would be to use a stereo mode configuration. Now I did talk to Dayton Audio's engineers and ask them why they have a stereo input. Their response, for PC racing simulation. There are some racing simulation software that can differentiate between the left and the right subwoofers. So when you hook this up in a racing simulator, it'll allow that particular racer to be able to tell where that vibration is coming from. Well, at least whether it's coming from the left side or the right side. This isn't necessarily useful for home theater, but it's still a nice feature to have. You can run this in bridged mono mode. By doing this, you only run one RCA cable to the unit and get a little more wattage for your bass shakers. This is a little more complicated to wire, but Dayton Audio does offer some wiring diagrams on their website to help you with the install. Let's talk a little bit more about the features it offers. First, it does offer that five volt USB power on the back of the amplifier. Normally, this would be overlooked. However, Dayton Audio has a unit called the Wavelink. This will wirelessly transmit your subwoofer signal across your room. It is no accident that this unit uses five volts. By using five volts, you can plug this unit into the back of the BSA 200, thus allowing you to keep the amplifier close to your seating area 
without having to run that subwoofer cable all the way across your room. There are even RCA outputs, which would allow you to easily add multiple of these amplifiers by just daisy chaining some RCA cables. The reason you might want this amplifier near you is that it comes with a wired remote control. This is the one thing that has been missing from my bass shakers. I love bass shakers, but not everyone does. This allows you easily to adjust the volume up and down so that you can get a nice comfortable level for everyone to enjoy that movie. If you don't want the bass shakers on, you can easily power it off right there from the same remote control. Now, if you were to split the bass shakers between different seats and wire them in your stereo mode, you can use this left and right balance to have a greater control of which seats get more or less of the bass. Now, having run bass shakers in my last theater, I always knew I wanted a way to control the volume. However, I didn't think about a way to evenly distribute to seating areas. With all of these features, you probably think it is rather large. It isn't. It is only nine and a half inches wide by eight and a half inches deep and only two and a half inches tall, meaning this could easily fit on an end table right next to your seating area, or depending on your furniture, underneath it. The one question I know you'll ask is can it be used as a standalone subwoofer amplifier? The answer is yes. This will work just fine with any subwoofer you want to power. It does not need to be used for bass shakers. In fact, you don't even have to stick this near your couch. If you don't think you're going to be using that remote control, you can keep this up near your equipment. That's what I like about this unit. It is very versatile. But I know what you're really wondering and concerned with. How does it sound? Let's go ahead and find out. Alright guys, what'd you think of the bass shakers? Now we know the kids like them, but what are my final thoughts? But truthfully, I've been using bass shakers for many years, and most of the time I've just been using those Shure amplifier boards, and it works quite alright. But honestly, this BSA 200 for me is a game changer. I love the fact that it has that remote control, I can turn it on and off, I can control the volume, although I rarely do control the volume, I'm usually more just an on or off type guy. But just being able to have that flexibility is pretty nice. The only thing, there's a couple things I don't really like about it. Uh, one, uh, it makes me want to go buy the Wavelink system. <laughs> I love the fact that I don't have to necessarily run a subwoofer cable across, across the room. That's nice. Although there is one run now, so who knows. Now, a couple things I didn't really like about it, though, is one, I don't really care for that left and right adjustment. One, I'm never going to adjust it. Two, it's that car audio amplifier style adjustment with the screwdriver. I don't like those. It's very hard to tell where you're at, whether you're actually balanced between the left and right. And honestly, I just, I don't need it. I, I'm never going to use the left to right adjustment. And I don't think a lot of people are. So I think that could have been just left off completely. I also don't like the knob on the low pass cutoff frequency. I just want something that can easily show me where I'm at on the spectrum of 50 to 200 Hertz. And that screw, it's really hard to tell where you're at. So I would really like to see that turn into a knob someday with a clear indication of where you're at on that frequency response. I think though really what Dayton Audio was probably going for is this is just supposed to be an amplifier that you set and forget. And honestly, once you set it up, it'll be done. So I guess really those knobs aren't a huge issue, but it could be improved upon. Overall though, I can't complain. It really has transformed my movies. I love it. Obviously, you saw that my nieces and nephews and my children love it. And I would say that this is a definite buy for someone that has those Dayton Audio bass shakers or the Aura ones. If you don't have bass shakers and you're interested in them, Dayton Audio does provide some packages that include this amplifier as well as all four bass shakers with it. I'll make sure to link that down below. Guys, this has been the review of the BSA 200. I hope that you have enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Make sure to ring the bell. Thanks, guys. This is Toyd's DIY Audio, and I'm out.